Welcome to another episode of the microprocessors course. In this episode, I will teach you the 8086 system bus structure and operation with the basic system timing diagram. If once you understand the basic system timing diagram, it is very easy to understand the minimum mode and maximum mode timing diagrams. Let us go through the general 8086 system bus structure. Here, the 8086 has multiplexer address and data bus. Default, the 8086 microprocessor is using the multiplexer pins. What is multiplexing means that both address and data pins will be combined together. It flows through one channel. So, through one channel in different time slots, the address will be used as well as the data pins will be used. That is called multiplexing technique. So different signals will be used in a different uh, time slots uh, through one channel. So why we are using the multiplexing technique means that when we are using the multiplexing technique, the pins will be drastically reduced. In order to reduce the number of pins, we just use the multiplexing technique in a 8086 microprocessor. But one of the disadvantages will be happened when we go through the multiplexing technique. The data transfer rate will be somewhat slower in the multiplexed pins. That is one of the disadvantages in a multiplexing technique. Anyway, that is a different issue. After multiplexed pins, after processing the information, the address will be separate out as well as the data will be separate out. In order to separate the address and the data, we just use some sort of latches and trans receivers which are connected to the 8086 microprocessor. So, we have a ALE pin that ALE pin will be connected to the latches as well as the trans receivers. Let us see here the block diagram. Here, this is the 8086 microprocessor and this is address latch enable pin. This address latch enable will be connected to the strobe signal of the 8282 IC. This 8282 IC is a latch IC. Whenever the ALE is connected to the STB and whenever it reaches 1, then the latch will be activated and tied to the 8086 microprocessor so that address will be sent through the address bus. So the address lines will be placed through the address bus using the 8282. Here address latches will be used. Each latch will be 8 bit. So 3 latches means that 24 bits will be available. But here in the 8086 microprocessor, we just use the 20 address lines so that 3 latches will be required. In the same manner, bus high enable pin is also connected to the 8282. The same BHC bar is also Send out higher byte of the most significant bits A16 to A19. Logically, it will be zero. That will be sent also through the address bus with the AD0 to AD15. So address lines will be sent through A to A2 through the address bus as well as whenever the AL is one, the data also sent through A286. That means the trans receivers. Whenever the OE bar is connected to the data enable pin and the DT by R bar is connected to the T. So, trans receiver is also tied to the 8086 microprocessor and the data will be sent through 8286. The data will be transferred on the data bus. So, this is the general bus operation will be happened during different time slots. Now, let us see here to demultiplex the address and data lines. We just use the latches I have already shown you just now. So, this is the 8086 microprocessor and this is the latches 8282. 8282 and whenever the AL is, uh, AL is connected to the 8282 and address will be sended. As well as whenever AL is connected to the trans receiver like 8286, the data will be transferred. But the data and address will be transferred during the different time slots. So the address will be transferred during the T1 and T1 and T2. And the data will be transferred during the T3 and T4. What is this T1 and T2 and T3 and T4 means that? To execute at least one instruction, we need at least four clock cycles. So, four clock cycles will be treated as a one bus cycle. That means that like a memory read or a IO read and a memory read and a IO read operation, any one of the operation. So, this is a treated as a one clock period that is called T1. Another one is T2. Another one is T3. So, in between the T3 and T4, generally, we inserted a TW instruction. After a while, we will see what is TW and another one is T4 instruction. So, to execute at least one instruction like memory read or IO read, we need four clock cycles. 
similarly we can append another four clock cycles for a memory write and io write operation let us understand here whenever the al is connected means that whenever the al is one then address will be placed through the t1 and t2 and the data will be placed during the t3 and t4 in the same manner higher order address bus this is ad not to ad 15 and the higher order bus a 16 to and a 19 will be placed during the t1 and t2 during the t1 and t2 and status will be placed during the t3 and t4 so there is a some time required to change the address to the status or address to data that means that during the t2 it is defined for it is defined for changing the direction of the bus during the reading operation so the address will be transferred during the t1 and t2 and the data will be transferred during the t3 and t4 and another pin is ready signal ready signal means that these a2 a2 is a peripheral device and a2 a86 is also peripheral device means that external external hardware devices these are treated as a slow devices and a8086 microprocessor is a fast device in order to synchronize a fast device with the slow devices we need some time so whenever the ready signal is used it is sampled during the t3 so during the t3 during the t3 the ready signal is going to be sampled so whenever the ready signal is going to be high whenever the ready signal is going to be high then only the synchronism will be happened and the data will be transferred in either end so that we need to wait until until ready bar is going to be high so if peripheral devices and the processor is not going to be ready then between the t3 and t4 wait instruction is going to be executed so during the wait instruction nothing will happen whatever the things are there at t3 those things will be remains the same and forwarded to the t4 whenever the ready signal is going to be high and remaining pins like a status pins s3 to s7 status pins also during the t3 and t4 this will be displayed and s0 s s0 s1 s2 are these are the three important pins which is used for identifying the bus transaction by the bus controller so to the 8086 microprocessor we can use another bus controller using the bus controller status signals will be connected to the bus controller using this decoder we just generate the 629 additional output signals nothing but a memory read memory rate and ivory read and ivory rate and other different signals will be passed out through the bus controller so s0 s1 s2 signals are used in a maximum mode for identifying the bus transaction by the bus controller and s3 and s4 s3 and s4 signals are if you are providing 00 we can use the code segment we can use the data segment and if it is a s3 and s4 is one a stack segment if it is a 10 and it is a code segment if it is a 11 it is a data segment this is a extra data segment so by providing the s3 and s4 0 0 extra segment will be extra extra segment will be used and if it is a 0 1 data stack segment will be identified if it is a 10 code segment will be identified and 11 data segment will be used so by providing the values of uh, different s3 and s4 it is indicating that uh, which segment is used for the bus cycle for forming the address so sometimes uh, what happened the instructions are coming from the memory to the microprocessor during that period we need to provide the segment address so the segment address will be provided by the values of s3 and s4 by changing the 00 and 01 and 10 and 11 and s5 pin is a interrupt enable flag bit flag interrupt enable bit of the flag register in the flag register we have a interrupt enable pin that is enabled by the s5 pin s6 pin is logically providing the zero value and s7 pin is a a spare bit so far we are not using up now these are the very important points in a general 8086 system bus structure if we providing s0 s1 s2 values if we providing s0 s1 s2 values as a 0 0 0 0 this is called interrupt acknowledgement if it is a 0 0 1 io reading operation as well as if it is a 0 1 0 io write operation if it is a 0 1 1 uh, nothing will be done it's a halt of the program uh, if it is a 1 0 1 1 0 0 instruction fetch will instruction fetch means that uh, the instructions coming from the memory to the microprocessor 
so that uh, instructions are read, read read by the 100 and if it is a 101 memory read operation if it is a 110 memory write operation if it is a 11 inactive state or a passive state so like this uh, different types of uh, controls different types of uh, status signals will be used in a uh, maximum world that means that you can identify you can simply identify the bus transaction by the bus controller and also we can use the here we have a den pin and a dt by r bar pin these are the two pins are connected to the 8286 microprocessor to receive the data from the 8286 to the microprocessor as well as the microprocessor to the 8286 means that to receive or transmitting the data we just you configure the den and dt by r bar whenever the dt by r bar equals to 0 that is a receiving operation means that from the 8286 it will be coming to the microprocessor whenever the dt by r bar one is 1 that means that the it sends the information from the microprocessor to the 8286 through the data bus in the same manner we have a den pin data enable pin will be connected to the output enable bar pin so that this will be tied together so that the data will be transferred accordingly and also of course we can use the hold and hlda signal these are the two important signals that will be used for controlling the dma with this we just remind some of the important points in 8086 system bus structure i hope you understand something about the system bus structure